Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Thursday, February 11th, and from the end of Ohio's coronavirus curfew to day three of the impeachment trial against former President Donald Trump, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, breaking news, it's still cold outside and there's more snow on the way. So we're gonna take a look at what's ahead with our first alert weather team. The best chances of snow in my 10 day forecast remain Saturday with likely minor accumulations and there'll be two different opportunities next week. A uh, one Monday night, one Wednesday night. That's how it looks right now. The timing can always shift a little bit, but the Monday night one looks pretty solid coming in after sunset as the week gets started. Here are current temperatures across the country and not much has changed. Boy, it's hot in Florida up in the 80s and off to the north again. This is cold, but much like the weather that we have here, it's not extreme for its location this time of the year. Temperatures here have been running a good 15 degrees below normal for highs. And today, another one of those days where the high hit low 20s. The normal now is uh, coming up through the 30s. It's 17 right now in Fremont and in Port Clinton and Upper Sandusky also is reporting 17 degrees. There's going to be cloud cover overnight and a little bit of patches of clearing in between. So I think the low is only going to get down to about 10 above tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we'll have as much sunshine as today. I'm going to keep with a mostly cloudy uh, to cloudy forecast for tomorrow, but a quiet day, not only in southeast lower Michigan and northwest Ohio, but all across the state of Ohio. Just kind of a, a breather tomorrow and sit back and look at the beauty of winter as the snow remains blanketed across the area. Watch the clock here overnight into Saturday morning. There will be a chance that some snow moves in before the sun comes up on Saturday. And then light snow, a chance of it on and off all through the course of the day, but it should be light enough that we're looking at minor accumulations. Ohio statewide coronavirus curfew has been lifted, so starting tonight, businesses like bars and restaurants are able to operate under their normal hours. So. How did this happen? Well, DeWine previously said that after the 11 p.m. curfew had been in effect for a total of two weeks, as long as the total number of COVID-19 positive patients in Ohio hospitals stayed below 2,500 for seven straight days, the curfew would be no more. As of today, we have stayed below that number for 10 straight days. So as long as we continue on this trend, we are in the clear. However, the governor has made clear that should hospitalization spike again, the curfew could be reinstated. And the Ohio Department of Health announced yesterday that as many as 4,000 deaths in the state may have gone underreported. The department will slowly add in those additions to the daily count over a period of a few days. So today, for example, an additional 650 deaths were added to the usual daily count count as a way to reconcile some of those that were previously unreported. Process issues affecting the reconciliation and reporting of these deaths began in October, and the issue was reportedly identified during routine employee training. The additional 4,000 deaths would bring the state's total to a number closer to 16,000 rather than the estimated 12,000 currently reported, which is a 33% jump. And the Toledo Lucas County Health Department had a vaccine update today saying that this week the state has prioritized the county's doses for school personnel. And according to the health department's website, while this means less vaccine could be allocated for 65 plus individuals, it is anticipated the amount of vaccine available for 65 plus individuals will increase again as early as next week's vaccine delivery. Health Commissioner Eric Dijinsky said there are 145,000 Lucas County residents who are currently eligible for vaccinations. This week, there were 10,000 vaccines available and of those 8,000 were set aside for K through 12 school staff, leaving 2,000 open appointments in the county. Superintendents received vaccinations yesterday and the health department plans to vaccinate 8,000 K through 12 teachers and staff this Friday and Saturday at the University of Toledo ROTC Hall. Now, if you work at a school and you do plan to get a vaccine, your district should reach out to you about how to make an appointment. If you have questions, reach out to your school administrator. Now, Jajinski said that next week, week, more doses will be available by several thousand since those K-12 through doses will have been accounted for. But this Phase 1B category will likely continue for several weeks, and right now, we don't know what the next phase looks like. Now, if you're struggling to make an appointment, here's some information for you. Veterans, call 419-259-2000 and hit Option 0 to register through the Veterans Affairs Office. Vets will need their discharge paper information to register. 
And if you have problems accessing the internet, the health department has set aside appointments for you. To get help, you can call the United Way by dialing 211 or your area office on aging in Lucas County. That number is 419-382-0624. For information on how you can register for the vaccine in Northwest Ohio and in Southeast Michigan, check out the links in the description of this video. And today, House impeachment managers wrapped up their opening arguments in the Senate trial against former President Donald Trump. House Democrats prosecuting Donald Trump's impeachment claimed today that the Capitol invaders believe they are acting on the president's orders to storm the building and stop the joint session of Congress that was certifying Democrat Joe Biden's election. The prosecutors described in personal terms the horror they faced during the January 6th Capitol riot and drilled down on what they called the public and explicit instructions that Trump gave his supporters both in the weeks before the January 6th attack and his midday rally that morning. They showed videos of rioters, some that were posted on social media by the rioters themselves, talking about how they were doing it, quote, all for Trump. Now tomorrow, we will hear from Trump's defense, who previously argued that the former president was simply using his First Amendment rights when speaking about the election and say there's no evidence that Trump knew rioters would storm the Capitol when he made his speech. So here's a breakdown of what's next. Again, tomorrow things are turned over to former President Donald Trump's lawyers, who will have a total of 16 hours stretched over two days to present their case. After both sides are done, senators will have up to four hours to question both sides. Then if House impeachment managers request witnesses, the Senate will debate and vote on that. Both sides will then present closing arguments. And finally, the Senate will vote on the article of impeachment, and that vote will likely happen sometime between Saturday and early next week. You can, of course, watch live every step of the way on WTOL.com and on the WTOL Facebook page. And before I go, I want to leave with a little something more uplifting. A French nun who survived COVID-19 is now celebrating her 117th birthday with some wine and prayer. There was champagne and red wine, a feast with her favorite dessert, which is baked Alaska, by the way, a mass in her honor, and other treats to toast Sister Andre's exceptional longevity through two world wars and a recent coronavirus infection. Sister Andre's birth name is Lucille Randon, and the gerontology research group, which validates details of people thought to be 110 or older, lists her as the second oldest known living person in the world behind only a 118-year-old woman in Japan. So happy birthday, Sister Andre. You know, I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate, but that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.